Well hi everyone and a warm welcome back. If you're joining us for the first time on this channel, an especially warm welcome to you. Uh, before we start, as always, um, a big thank you to the patrons of the channel. Your contributions are very much appreciated. So today's video we're going to be looking at dismantling uh, of the door mirrors. There's two basic types and each of them dismantle in a different way. Now generally speaking you may never need to take these apart. But with our cars getting older and older, uh, they're starting to look a bit tired and a lot of you are starting to do or have done uh, respray work to your cars. Now, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that I'm an advocate of doing everything to the best possible uh, standards. And for me, and I'm sorry if you don't do it this way, for me, there is only one way to spray a car, and that is to fully dismantle it and do each panel individually, avoiding overspray onto anything else. Um, I find it a little bit sad myself when I see cars come in that have been resprayed by just masking off. And generally, these tend to be done by the cheaper garages, who don't really take the time and care to do the job properly. So if you've had that done to your car, I'm sorry, if that's the way you spray a car yourself. I'm sorry, it's just my personal opinion that these are beautiful cars, they're getting old, and if you're gonna do work on them, it's better to do the job properly. Um, it only adds a couple of extra hours, so it's well worth dismantling everything and doing it properly. So uh, we're gonna be dismantling the mirrors today. You may also need to dismantle them if you've got a fault, of course. Um, so there are good reasons to know how to dismantle these. Um, so as always, before we get going, I just have a quick look at the tools with you and then we can get on with the job. So on our cars, there's two basic types of mirror used. Um, there are certain other variations I've seen, but I'm not too sure about those. So we're just gonna look at these two most common types. And the main way to tell the difference by looking is to do with the plug connections on the bottom. One has a connection permanently fitted in, and the other one is a loose connection or one that is plugged in inside the door. So um, we're gonna start with this one. This is the more basic one. All you're gonna need for tools is a little tiny flathead screwdriver uh, or something similar. You'll see what it's for as we go along. A couple of plastic trim tools to remove the mirror a Phillips screwdriver and if you're into investing in tools you can now buy these little sets of uh, wire removers uh, to get the pins out of the plugs um, these are a worthwhile investment you can buy these for just a, a couple of pounds and nothing at all and it covers all the different types of plugs and sockets that you're likely to come through over time uh, come across over time sorry so let's start with a simple one we start off on the bottom um, I've done a previous video on how to remove the mirror from the car, so we're not going to go through that again. Um, normally there's a plastic surround on here as well, the same as this one, but I couldn't find this one this morning. We're going to start off by removing the glass. Again, I've covered this in a previous uh, video, but we'll do it again quickly. Just push on the top of the glass to reach its maximum tilt. Get your two trim tools. Sometimes you can do it with just one if you're lucky and just get it under the edge about 10 millimeters and just lever it up till you hear that popping sound. Then move to the other side, about here. And pop that one up. Now finish tilting the mirror up and as it reaches a certain point, you can pull it away. Now don't yank it hard because on the other side, you've got the cable for the heating section. All we're going to do is push the socket in this direction until it comes out at the top. Then you can twist it. And here's what the little flathead screwdriver is for. We've got to separate these two pieces. Now you can see there's a little tab there that stops it coming out easily. And you don't want to yank on these wires at all. So I find the easiest way without risk of damage is to slip your screwdriver in there and just prise that out like that. Now put your mirror to one side. Now we can move on to the bottom of the mirror. Three simple screws. You 
if you've got a magnetic screwdriver it makes life a lot easier if you don't have one you can make one really easy any standard uh, screwdriver you just run it along the side of a magnet and then your screwdriver becomes magnetized it just saves you dropping those little screws off the end okay now this then pulls off next one is this screw here now we move to the inside we need to remove this plastic plate here Now this is actually clipped in as well as screwed in, so you just sort of work it around and you'll find that along clip and pull out. Now we've got four more screws, one, two, three, and four down in there. You can see this has been sprayed before, you've got the usual overspray on everything, although this one isn't as bad as some I've seen. Uh, yeah, it's more overspray down here as well. So at this point, this unit will now come out. And how simple was that? That's got to be under three minutes to do that. Um, and it does a much nicer job when you're spraying it. So now uh, we've very quickly put this one back together. I'm not doing a full demonstration because you see how it came apart. We'll put this one back together and then we'll take a look at the next one. So that one back in there. Uh, do wiggle this around. It's not just a case of lining up the holes, but it actually seats into the holes so it won't twist. Your screws are the self-cutting ones, four of those. Now ordinarily I say don't tighten any down until they're all in, but because this slotted into a specific spot it cannot move. So it's not such a problem. An interesting little detail, the thread on these even though they go into what appears to be a metal mounting uh -huh. point, it's a different thread compared it to is, the normal yeah. metal thread. It is, yeah. Yeah, it does cut into the metal. Okay, piece of plastic. Again, this sort of clips into place. You just wiggle it around until you feel it locate, and once it's located, it won't move. With these screws, before trying to just straight screw them in, just go back until you feel a little click and then that'll get you into the old thread rather than trying to cut a new thread. Now the one on the bottom here. And then we'll just push that plug into place and drop this over the top. And again, you'll feel it all lock into place. And finally the mirror. Two tabs here. Clip those in. 
push it down now you tilt the other way and till the mirror pops on done that must be another three minutes max so that's that one done the next one's a little trickier give me a minute and we'll move on to that one mirror number two slightly different but we'll start off with the same process removal of the mirror itself by getting this out the way as soon as possible you reduce the risk of breaking it hopefully it's weird that one doesn't want to pop off ah there we go Now this one has a slightly different heater plug. Just undo the wires carefully. Now this one actually pops away from the mirror directly. Let's see if we can get this off without breaking it. I always am very nervous of these things. They don't quite come in off too easily. Let's see if we can get this one under there. There we go. So we'll put that out the way safe. Now we're on to the bottom. You can remove this piece of plastic. It just simply pulls off. Although this one seems to have some sort of glue on it. Ah, judging by the overspray, there's a chance someone's already had a go at this one as well. Or maybe it's factory. No, that's factory. Okay. Now it starts to get a bit more tricky because you can see that this plug has got to go through that small hole and there is no way that is fitting through the hole. So we've got to take all of the wires out of the plug. Now this isn't a particularly difficult job. Um, it's just a very detailed job. Now I've tried my hardest to do a drawing of what you're going to be doing in this plug because you obviously won't be able to see it on camera. So if I show you here, a side profile, I'm around the wrong way. We have a row of metal pins, the electrical connectors. And then just at the base of the pin on the right hand, or sorry, on the left hand side as you view it, there are some little plastic tabs. So we have the metal pin, if you come across to the, my terrible drawing, this is the metal pin. It's got a little lip at the top, and that's stopped from coming out by this little plastic clip here so what we've got to do is push that clip away from the pin to allow the pin to come out and to do that we just use a little tool uh, you want one something like that and you're going to slide that uh, let me try and do this on film grab one of the wires at one end slide the tool down there and just try to lever that clip away at the same time as pulling the wire and then it will come out and from here you can just about see the little um, piece that sticks out there that stops it from coming out of the socket so that's one now you probably want to grab yourself a pen and paper. You'll notice all of these wires are color coded. Every single one is a different color apart from the ones for the heater. They are both the same color. If I turn it around, they're a green, uh, a black wire with a green stripe and some little silver splashes of paint up them. So just make a note of the exact order that those wires are in and which way round they go. It's very important that you put them back together exactly the same. So we'll repeat that process now for the other wires. Which one did I use? I think that one. So one at a time, push a tab out the way. And some of them can be a bit tricky, don't get me wrong, they're not gonna jump out for you nice and easily, but they will all come out. I don't think you need to watch me do every single one on film. 
So we'll cut it while I get the rest out and then we'll move on with the rest of the video. Now with all the wires removed from the plug, we can now continue with the process. And the next thing is the three screws at the bottom here. Looks like someone used a thread lock or something on it. Yeah, they do actually have a thread lock on these anyway, as standard. I guess it's to stop them vibrating loose. Imagine the wind load on those going down the road. On the, the mirrors themselves vibrating very slightly in the wind. So now this comes off. We have one screw here. And then on this side, one screw here. And then if we move this out the way slightly, we've got one more screw behind here. A bit harder to get to, but you can still get in there. Now this should come out. And now we've got four remaining screws. One, two, one down in there, and one down in there. I wonder if this is a later, mo later model design. Oh, I don't know. I think that's the sort of thing perhaps uh, Robert Evil Empire or something could perhaps tell you. Oh, having said that, no, mine's a 1990 and I've got these mirrors on mine. This type? Yeah. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's the same. Uh, I, I don't know. I never asked a question because I don't need to know. That's when a magnetic screwdriver comes in handy. And now, if I got this right, out she comes. Easy peasy, couple of minutes and we're done. So putting it back together, we'll see if we can quickly do this. This one in. Make sure you get that tab on the outside rather than get it on the inside. Well, I probably won't go back together if you get it wrong. And as with the other one, this not only locates, but you'll feel it clip in or, or drop into a, a slotted area. And once it's there, it won't move. Now this piece of plastic back in. Again, when you've got it in the right place, you'll feel it drop into the screw holes and lock into place. And on the base, this one here. It's 
through the bottom. Now because these screws have still got thread lock on and I felt it was very tight getting them out, I'm guessing it'll be tight getting them back in, in which case I won't bother putting fresh lock on there. Okay, now we're on to the wires. Now here's my little drawing that I did. And uh, I've got that round the wrong way. So it's a very crude drawing, but it tells me what I needed to know and you're gonna do yours in the same way. So this bit here is this bit here. So I knew that it was that way up. And then the order of wires. Now you have to put the wires in the right way round. And also, if you get yourself tidied up, get them roughly in the order that they're going to go, it will help you to keep things tidy. Red and white. Okay, that's more or less it. Now remember the little tag that sticks out on there. When you put it in, the tag has to be on the side that the plastic clip is. So my plastic clip is to my right, your left. So I'll be facing it this way round. Okay, now I've got it this way up. So now I turn it with the tag down, slide it in, and you'll feel it click. Once it clicks, it's in properly. So now I've got my black, green, silver. Go and turn it round. And then black and silver on its own. I don't know if uh, I'm close enough for you to hear that on the camera, but there is a definite audible and feel of a click when it's in. And then red. And white. Black, green, silver. and then green on its own. Okay, looks like it just came out the factory. Now we can put this back in. Oh no, don't tell me. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, oh thank goodness. I thought that could go on after. That really scared me then. And finally the mirror. There we go, job done. Not too time consuming, not too difficult, a regular DIY man at home job. Um, so I'm sure that's gonna be useful to some of you. I hope you've enjoyed this video or any one of the 100 or so that are already online. I'll keep on making them for as long as I can. Um, again, a thank, thank you to the patrons. If you're new to this channel, you might want to know we also have a forum um, available for the channel. It's not a, a general forum that most other forums are out there. This is just for the channel um, and people share stories and tips and stuff about the videos and about their own cars and what they've been doing. Um, if you're thinking of becoming a patron, again you'll find the details at the end of the video uh, and uh, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.